Hey, folks, Tom Smith here. We have a lot of us coming in right now. For those of you that are joining us, we're going to start in about a minute here. Uh, go ahead and use this opportunity to calibrate your speakers, etc. For those of you that have questions, there's a question and answer section as well as a chat area. By all means, feel free to go ahead and ask us a question. We have a lot to cover in 40 minutes, and we probably won't be able to address all questions. But uh, nonetheless, we'll have our numbers up there for support, and so will Chuck for support for his teams if you have questions of him and the support staff. Uh, don't be shy. Please feel free uh, to ask them, and if we don't get to them, I'll forward them to Chuck's support group. And as well, if you have some questions regarding brokerage or accounts, feel free to address them with us. Uh, we're going to get started here in about one minute. Thanks. Folks, why don't we go ahead and get started? My name is Tom Smith. Uh, many of you are uh, returning attendees. At Chuck is probably our biggest educational contributor that we have here at Trade Monster. And Chuck takes enough time out where every month he's been putting together presentations to show strategies and how they benefit his portfolios and how they can benefit you. Uh, it's a lot of time to do these. Chuck takes out a lot of times to come in here and he does these at no costs. Uh, Trade Monster doesn't benefit him in any way uh, for doing these, and we're, we're very grateful that he does do these. Um, Chuck, are you with us by any chance? Yes. Can you hear me, Tom? Yes, I can. You sound great. And I'm just telling our attendees how much we thank you taking your time out every single month to do these educational webinars, and we get a lot of great feedback from these. Um, okay, for those great. Of you, yeah, I uh, wanted to thank you, Tom, for taking the time to uh, set these up, and uh, I, I enjoy doing them, so uh, it's a win-win. That's great to hear, Chuck. Let's go ahead and get started on making you the presenter here. Okay. Um, for for those of you that aren't familiar with the format, as I'm making Chuck the presenter, you're going to see his stuff start coming up. Um, but nonetheless, if you want to take a look at this archive, we'll have it archived tomorrow on www.mytrademonster.com. And we'll put a screenshot up there for you uh, later on in the webinar presentation so you can listen to the recording. Uh, all right, Chuck, I, I went ahead and moved it to the presenter. You can go ahead and start rolling with this. Okay, I uh, clicked here my desktop, so perfect. Okay, now I'm going to go into um, slideshow mode. And we got you. Okay, great. All right, thanks, Tom, and uh, thanks again for taking the time to set up these uh, monthly webinars. I know it, it takes up a lot of your time, so uh, we appreciate that. And um, today we're going to explore... Uh, two strategies that I use day in and day out, and uh, we've we've had a lot of success this year uh, trading options. Um, the markets have been uh, trending well, and uh, if you're lucky enough to have that kind of success, and let's say you have a 50 to 100 percent return on your option, then you're always asking yourself, well, should I close that option out? Um, and take profits, or should I continue to hold it uh, because the stock underlying stock is trending well? So this is always a, a good dilemma to have, so to speak. Um, uh, you know whether you take profits or uh, hold your position for further profit. So I'm going to show you a, a strategy today that allows us to lock in a profit on our current option trade. Uh, and at the same time, if the underlying stock, the ETF, keeps rising in price, our uh, profit potential is not capped. So this this eliminates that decision you have to make when you have a, a profitable option position. And I'm also going to show you another technique that we use to um, compound our returns. And I'm also going to talk about a strategy for compounding returns by selling weekly option premium. 
So we'll discuss these two strategies, and then I'll have a question and answer ses session after the uh, presentation. So we've been using um, my high accuracy option trading uh, strategy for many many years, and uh, it's been it's been very successful. It's basically a, a trend following system, and we use other indicators when a stock is on a buy signal to enter our trade, and that's been working very well for many years. So, our there's two parts to our high accuracy option trading. Part one is we use Prime Trade Select, which is our trade selection process, to select an option with the best profit potential. And then part two is we use what I call the 1% rule to select an option strike price with a high probability of success. So this high accuracy option trading has been doing very well, and uh, we're going to look at a strategy for um, locking in. We've had a lot of profits with this strategy, and we want to look at a, a, another strategy to lock in those profits and at the same time not limit our upside potential. So part one um, of prime trade select is uh, determine the price trend, and we want to do that to see if a stock is on a buy or sell signal. And if a stock is on a buy signal, then we buy call options, which is a bullish strategy. If the stock is on a sell signal, then we want to buy put options, which is a bearish strategy. Uh, right now, we're just focused on call options, and we have a lot of uh, stocks that are in strong trends. However, during the last two severe bear markets, I just want to mention that this high accuracy option trading works both ways. And we were heavily short during the last two severe bear markets and we profited from the uh, downside. Uh, step two is we want to confirm the price trend and determine the extent of the buying or selling pressure for a stock and then isolate the very best profit opportunities. And then step three is we want to select a low risk entry point using the Keltner channels. And in previous webinars, I went into detail on these three steps. So we're, <clears throat> we're not going to look at those today. Um, but <clears throat> if you want to learn more about our high accuracy option trading, we have that archived in uh, previous webinars. <clears throat> So again, um, if a stock is on a uh, buy signal, we're going to purchase uh, call options. And uh, if the stock is on a sell signal, we're going to uh, take a bearish position, either buy a put option or a, a put spread. So prime trade select works in both bull and bear markets. And then part two, as I mentioned, was uh, we use the 1% rule to select an option strike price with a high probability of success. And uh, uh, once you select an option trade, uh, let's say you pick out um, uh, Cigna as a, a, a stock that you want to purchase an option in, um, if you look at the option change, you're going to have hundreds or, or even thousands of strike prices to choose from, depending on which stock you're looking at. So uh, that becomes a uh, sometimes a difficult decision. Which strike price do I pick out of these hundreds that are available for a stock, or in some in some cases even thousands of strike prices? So selecting the strike price is just as important as selecting the trade itself. So we use the 1% rule uh, to select the option strike price. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you a couple of uh, current trade examples. I, I currently um, have these trades uh, as open positions, and we're going to go through and just take a look at them and see how we uh, pick these stocks and uh, and also selected the uh, strike price. And we'll see uh, what we do when we uh, get to that point where we have a, a profit in the option and um, we want to lock in that profit so uh, that if that stock suddenly declines in price, 
uh, you know, we, we locked in a profit, and at the same time, we let um, there's no limit on our profit potential. If the underlying stock keeps going up in price, then we continue to benefit. So let's look at a couple trade examples uh, that I have on right now. This is for uh, Cigna, the um, insurance company. And um, you can see this is the daily price chart of Cigna, and we can see the daily uh, price movement. The, these red and black vertical lines are the daily price movement of the stock. So you can see <laughs> this is one of those charts that goes from lower left to upper right. And um, of course, that it's been in a very strong uh, price uptrend. Uh, when I took this snapshot, it was trading around 76. Uh, now it's trading around 81. So um, you can see this stock's already made a big price move. So the question is, um, how do I enter this uh, trade without taking a lot of risk? Because it's already had a big price up move. And what I did is I used uh, the Keltner channels. Um, this top blue line is the upper Keltner channel. And the dotted line is the middle Keltner channel. The lower line is the lower Keltner channel. So what I did with Cigna, I was watching it, and I waited until the the stock price uh, dropped down towards the lower Keltner channel. This means that the stock was getting um, oversold, and this would be a good time to enter this uh, trade, even though Cigna's already had uh, a large price move. This allows for a low-risk entry. So in case you missed the previous up move, uh, you can still get a low-risk entry with this trade. And you can see when the last time that uh, the Cigna stock dropped down towards the uh, lower Keltner channel and became oversold, and of course it had uh, an ensuing uh, uh, price rally here. So I was able to uh, get a low risk entry. This was around, uh, let's see, I bought this on June 3rd. So that was right in here when it was near this lower Keltner channel. I went ahead and bought the Cigna. Uh, July 50 call at 17 uh, points. And um, at the time, Cigna stock was trading at uh, 66.71. So if I buy the 50 strike price, that's an in the money call. And what I did is I input uh, Cigna, the stock symbol, uh, the stock price at 66.71, uh, the 50 strike option, and the option premium, and I use the call option purchase calculator to calculate the uh, profit loss potential for this option purchase, assuming various price changes in Cigna stock, in this example, from a 10% increase in the stock to a 10% decline. And the call option purchase calculator also uh, calculates the time value, and in this uh, option trade, the time value is only 29 cents. And the intrinsic value was 1671. So you can see that this option, it's in the money. It's mostly intrinsic value, uh, very little time value. So I used the um, 1% rule to uh, select this um, strike price. And the 1% rule simply is uh, you want to select an option strike price that has a time value portion. Um, of less than 1% of the uh, price of the stock. So we can see this uh, 29 cents is less than 1% of the current stock price. And what that means is, in this trade that I took, Cigna stock only has to go up 29 cents uh, in order for this trade to break even. So I'm not risking, um, I'm not highly leveraged with this trade as uh, Cigna only has to increase four tenths of 1% for this trade to break even. So that's why we use this 1% rule uh, because uh, if the stock only has to move up four tenths of 1% instead of 10% or 15%, obviously you're gonna have a much higher probability of this trade being profitable. So again, um, 
with, with uh, 29 cents of time value, uh, Cigna stock only has to increase uh, 29 cents or four tenths of 1% for this trade to break even. Now, any increase in the stock price above this 29 cents will result in a uh, profit. <clears throat> Here's another example. This is for uh, Best Buy. And again, we can see um, Best Buy has had a big move and um, I wanted to get a low risk entry, uh, even though the stock's already made a big move. So this was uh, on June 24th, right here, when the stock retraced near this lower Keltner channel, became oversold. I went ahead and bought the um, August uh, 20 strike call at 664. So uh, this is another example of the high accuracy uh, trade selection, we use prime trade select and then the 1% rule to um, select the option strike price. And in this example, um, Best Buy only has to um, move up 18 cents in order for this trade to break even. This only has 18 cents of time value in this trade. Uh, and it's mostly uh, intrinsic value. <clears throat> so again, um, if the stock, in this case, uh, Best Buy only has to move up seven tenths of a one percent uh, to break even, we'll have a much higher probability of this uh, trade working out compared to a, a, a strike price that requires, say, a ten to twenty percent increase in the stock price to break even. Uh, so the one uh, percent uh, rule call purchases have a much higher probability of success. Than if, than if you purchased at the money or out of the money uh, strike prices. So, as I mentioned, this high accuracy option trading has produced a lot of winning trades. And the question always is, well, what do I do now? I have a nice profit. And uh, in the case of the uh, Cigna uh, 50 strike call option, uh, I purchased. Um, I had a, I had a nice profit in it, so I had to decide. Well, should I sell this option, take my profits in case the stock the stock declined in price, with the possibility of the trade even turning into a loss? So you're always faced with that dilemma when you have these profits. So what I do is I purchase a put option and create a market neutral spread. And in this example, um, I purchased the Cigna. Uh, 50 strike call, and then um, a couple weeks later, I bought the Cigna 72 and a half strike put. And what this did was it locked in the current profit that I had in my Cigna call option purchase. And at the same time, if Cigna keeps moving up in price, then I the profit of this trade keeps going up. So there's no limit on the profit potential. And this is um, the market neutral calculator for this trade. And um, the, with the stock price trading at 76.36, uh, it's trading around 81 now. Uh, and purchasing the 50 strike call at 17 points, purchasing the 72 and a half strike put at 142, uh, this will calculate the uh, profit potential for this trade. And we can see that no matter what this stock does, uh, if it goes up 30% or goes down 60%, this trade will be profitable. And this lower row right here uh, gives you the percent return for the spread based on the change in the uh, stock price in this top row. So we can see if uh, Cigna stock remains flat at option expiration, this spread will have a 43% return. And uh, if Cigna stock goes up 10%, I'll have an 84% return. And if the uh, stock goes down in price, uh, I still profit. So this is a great way to uh, manage your trade if you have a profit. And this allows you to lock in the profit and at the same time doesn't uh, cap your uh, profit potential. And with the Best Buy trade, uh, <clears throat> A similar uh, profit loss scenario, if um, 
if the uh, stock is flat at option expiration, I get a 23% return. Uh, if it's down, I still get um, a 22.9% return. If it goes up 10%, I get a 60% return. <clears throat> so once I uh, initiate this market neutral uh, spread trade, I don't have to worry about protective stops or watching my position or uh, worrying about the earnings reports or other reports that can come out on the stock because my profit is locked in and I can just simply sit on this trade until expiration and then uh, if the stock still qualifies as a buy under prime trade select, I simply roll it over. And this is a very comfortable way to trade. You're not worried about earnings reports or uh, macro economic data. You just simply um, lock in a profit and just hold your position to, until uh, option expiration. <clears throat> Here's another example. This is for Wells Fargo. And uh, I purchased a call option when the uh, stock became oversold and we traced towards this uh, lower Keltner channel, which uh, gave me a low risk uh, entry. <clears throat> so let's now talk about uh, compounding our returns with option rollovers and um, if we have a market neutral trade that's profitable at option expiration um, you know we're faced with another high quality problem should I roll over the position or close the position out and <clears throat> what I like to do is if the underlying stock still qualifies as a buy under prime trade select, then I'll roll the position over. And uh, when you roll over these market neutral uh, spreads, uh, it reduces the cost basis of the new trade and allows us to compound our returns. And I'll show you some examples of that. So whenever you roll over, uh, let's say from the uh, September options to October options, which we were doing today, then the profit on the, the closeout of the September option will reduce the cost basis of the October option. So we're reducing our risk when we do these rollovers, and that allows us to um, compound our returns. <clears throat> Let me show, show you an example of this. Um, uh, this this is for uh, Costco, and um, Costco was on a prime trade select buy signal, and I bought the Costco uh, June 95 call for 15.40, and then I went ahead and sold sold uh, the, or I didn't sell this option. I rolled this option over uh, when it when it was at expiration. So. Purchased the option uh, in June, June 6th at 1540, and then it was a July option. So it's July option expiration um, on July 19th. I sold the option for um, a 22. I sold the option at 2257. So this gave me um, a 717, 7.17 uh, point profit on this July option. So uh, this reduced the cost basis of the August option by uh, 7.17 points. So by rolling over, I reduced the cost basis of the uh, August uh, purchase, and this allows me to compound my returns because um, as you reduce that cost basis, then, of course, your returns go up. So <clears throat> this brokerage account, transaction um, uh, shows that I bought the um, August 105 call at 1265. So the 7.17 profit on the July call, it reduced the cost basis of this August purchase by 7.17 points. So uh, it reduced the cost basis of the August call from 1265 to 548. And again, this allows me to reduce the cost basis, reduce my risk, and compound returns. And at the same time, 
I also purchased the August 115 put um, and created uh, uh, another market neutral spread uh, with this um, uh, Costco option purchase. And again, by creating that market neutral spread, I locked in profits and I also, at the same time, did not limit my uh, profit potential. So, uh, what I did here, this is the market neutral calculator, and I uh, plugged in the um, the uh, stock price at 118.07. Um, I bought the August 105 call, and my um, adjusted price after the rollover was 548. And then I purchased the uh, 115 strike put at 103. And this, the market neutral calculator uh, calculated the profit potential for this uh, trade, assuming different uh, price changes in, in Costco stock at August option expiration from uh, a 40% increase to a 60% decrease. And we can see that um, my minimum profit on this is going to be 100%. Uh, no matter what the underlying stock does. If the stock goes up 10%, I'm going to have a 282% return. If the stock goes down 20%, I'll have a 215% return. So <clears throat> this market neutral spread uh, combined with this rollover, now we're uh, locking in a you know 100% return no matter what happens. And uh, again, it, it's a very comfortable way to trade because I don't have to worry about any news that comes out about Costco or their, or their earnings or any macro uh, information on uh, the retail sector. So I just simply hold this trade until expiration, and then I just decide whether I'm going to roll it over again. So very uh, comfortable way to trade, knowing that you're going to have a uh, 100% return uh, no matter what happens. So then um, in uh, August, I rolled over from the August spread to the September spread. So this is the uh, second rollover. And again, um, the, uh, the rollover uh, reduced the cost of the September spread by 7.73 points. In other words, we had a 7.73 point profit, and that reduced the cost of the September spread. And this shows the um, uh, closeout of the August 105 call at 14.01 and the closeout of the August 115 put at 23 cents. And then I bought the uh, September 115 call at 5.19 and bought the September 120 put at 2.96. <clears throat> and this. This shows the actual um, spread trade that I used to roll over the uh, call portion of this spread. And at the time, uh, Costco was trading at 118.93. So uh, I sold to close the August 105 call and I bought to open the September 115 call. And I, I like to use spread orders to roll these options over because I save on the commissions and I also can save on the difference between the bid ask spread. I usually split this difference uh, in the middle and I can usually um, get filled at that price and then reduce the transaction costs of rolling over these options. So this shows the actual rollover uh, tr uh, trade that I use for the uh, call, uh, call side of the spread, uh, selling to close the August buying to open the September, and here's the put side of the spread, uh, sell to close the August put, and buy to open the uh, September put. And now I've re I reduced my cost basis uh, uh, almost down to zero on this trade. I only, ha I only have a cost basis of 42 cents uh, for this trade. So now my percent returns, of course, get much higher with such a low cost basis. So uh, I'm playing with the house's money, and uh, no matter what happens, I'm going to get 
a minimum profit of 1,090%. And again, these percentages goes up, they go up dramatically once your cost basis gets near zero. So uh, again, uh, doing the market neutral trade, uh, again, allows me to lock in a profit and also um, at the same time, not limit my upside potential. We can see that if Costco stock goes up 10%, then, <laughs> then I have a 3,795% return if it goes down 10%, I have a 2,881% return. So now I'm really getting down into high percentages because my cost basis is so low. <clears throat> now, guess what happened after I put on this uh, September market neutral spread? Uh, Costco stock declined sharply. You can see it was up around 120 and then got down to around the 110 range. So almost a 10%. Uh, decline here. So um, that's the value of having these market neutral spreads instead of just an option purchase. Because if uh, I, I purchased the September 115 call, so if I didn't purchase that put and I owned the September 115 call, if the stock closes below 115 at option expiration, I'm going to have a 100% loss on this 115 call. So that demonstrates the value of having these uh, market neutral spreads because instead of having a 100% loss potential, I have a minimum profit on this trade of 1,090%. So again, uh, this. Uh, these spread trades, they eliminate your risk, and at the same time, they don't cap your profit potential. So, um, again, if you only own the call option in this kind of decline, um, you know, you could have 100% loss on that call option. But if you also purchase the put, uh, you locked in your profits, and no matter what happens to Costco, you're still going to make that. 1,090% uh, return in this example. So that just shows you the value of these market neutral spreads. When the stock declines in price, you don't have to worry about it because you're going to get your minimum profit uh, no matter what happens. And uh, so when we get to rollover, if the stock uh, still qualifies under our prime trade select, then we want to. Um, uh, roll roll it over uh, to the next month or two months out and uh, lock in our profits and again uh, reducing our cost basis during this rollover to the point where our uh, risk is almost zero. And then again by purchasing the put option uh, if the stock goes down we're still going to profit. So it's a great way to trade, a very uh, um, low stress way to trade options. And here's another example of a rollover. Uh, this is for uh, Starbucks. Um, and in this one, um, I was closing out the August call and buying the September call. And here's the uh, spread order I used to uh, close out the August put and buy the September put. So this has been working out uh, real well this year. Uh, these these spreads just reduce our risk and allows us uh, to lock in profits month after month, no matter what happens to the uh, price of the underlying stock. And here's a um, actual rollover I did for Yahoo. And again, this was closing out the August call and buying the uh, September call. And here's the order for the. Um, close out of the August put and the purchase of the September put. So um, what I did is I took a, a snapshot um, a couple days ago of my um, market neutral trades. Uh, th these were for uh, Cigna, Costco, Johnson & Johnson, Starbucks, Wells Fargo, and Yahoo. And this portfolio uh, and I did this, by the way, in my retirement plan. This is a, uh, a snapshot of my profit sharing plan, which is a retirement plan. I trade these market neutral spreads. 
and um, you can see it lists uh, these uh, spreads. The first one is the Cigna um, September uh, 70 call. I have two of those, and uh, the Cigna September 77 and a half put. So this lists the uh, the various uh, market neutral spread trades I have, and the uh, average return for this portfolio is 422.8%. So you can see that um, this strategy of the, using the market neutral uh, spreads to lock in profits, no matter what happens, in combination with the rollovers, which reduce your cost, um, has resulted in a real good return. So the average return for this portfolio at the time was 422%. And what I did is um, I calculated the minimum minimum return for these trades at expiration, no matter what happens to the underlying stock. And uh, this has a minimum return of 268%. Chuck, I don't, I don't want to interrupt you, but we're getting a lot of questions. For those of you that keep asking, uh, how is Chuck selecting these particular stocks and, and these entry points, uh, at the end of the webinar today, I'll show you where you can go to uh, a two-series webinar where Chuck actually put on two different webinars for a stock selection process, which actually ties into this whole webinar. So uh, we'll address that at the end. I know a lot of people keep asking that question. Chuck, I didn't mean to interrupt you. I just wanted to address that with them. Okay, yeah, yeah, that's, that's, uh, that's a good point. Um, if you want to look at that, uh, trade selection process in detail that's uh, archived in uh, previous webinars. Um, so just to recap, this portfolio has an average return of 422%, um, and that uh, demonstrates the ability of this strategy to deliver uh, big returns with low risk, and the uh, rollovers allow us to reduce the cost basis of the trade and compound our return. And again, the uh, market neutral trades allow us to lock in profits regardless of the price movement of the underlying stock. And we also uh, trade these in my advisory service. Here's a uh, snapshot of market neutral portfolio. Um, and this lists the various uh, calls and put options we own. And uh, this portfolio uh, recently had an average return of 382% and uh, a profit of $156,000. Uh, and again, even if the underlying stocks in this portfolio go to zero, this, this would still be profitable uh, because with each of these market neutral trades, we locked in profits on our uh, call purchases. So if you wanted to take a look at the uh, the various strategies, if you just log on to weeklyoptionalert.com and click trade results, then you can see the, um, the um, current uh, profit results for these various uh, strategies. So I wanted to uh, cover another way to um, compound our returns by selling weekly option premium. And I've been doing these uh, weekly covered calls for several years now. And with the weekly covered calls, you buy a stock and then you sell a call option. And then uh, one week later, you close out that call option and sell another call option. So with weekly options, uh, you get to do this 52 times a year. So you can really start compounding your returns if you're rolling these over every week. And in a minute here, I'm going to show you um, over the last 10 months or so, uh, I've collected over $800,000 in option premium, which was cash that went into my brokerage account from selling these weekly call options. Now, when you collect $800,000 in cash, <laughs> then you really can start compounding the returns because now I can purchase uh, more uh, weekly covered calls, and uh, you can really compound your returns quickly when you're rolling over every week. And I'll show you some uh, actual examples of that. So uh, to initiate these weekly covered calls, 
we buy 100 shares of stock or an ETF, and then we sell a weekly call option. And when you sell a call option, uh, the premium is cash that goes into your brokerage account. Um, so if you sell an option that has four points of premium, uh, $400 in cash is credited to your brokerage account when you sell that option. And the, this cash credit reduces the cost basis of the stock and reduces the overall risk of the trade. And then, uh, as I mentioned, by selling these weekly options, you can really compound your returns really quickly. So, uh, in my experience, uh, I've been I've been doing these weekly covered calls for uh, several years, for about two and a half years, and I think the weekly options became available about three years ago. So, when I saw that <laughs> there was an opportunity to sell this option premium every every week, when I f first realized that, I jumped on this because this is a really low risk strategy, and uh, you can get a very high cash on cash return by selling this weekly uh, call premium. So, um, in my experience, and I'll show you some examples, uh, it can lead to 100% cash on cash return uh, regardless of the price movement of the underlying stock. So, if you invest 400,000, or if you in invest $4,000, uh, over the course of a year, you could easily receive 4000 in cash income over the course of a year. So if you invest $4,000 and you collect $4,000 in cash uh, over the course of the year, um, a lot of things can go wrong and you're still going to make money. So this is, this is a great uh, strategy. You've got to have you know, the discipline to do this every week, which I, which I do. And, um, you know, you have to have the discipline to roll it over every week. And and what I do is I like to keep the underlying stock and just roll over the option. That way I don't have to buy the stock every week. I don't, you know, I don't let it get called. I simply roll the option over and keep the stock. And that way I only have a weekly option rollover each week. And if you can maintain that the discipline and collect 100% cash on cash return, then uh, that's a really low risk strategy and a lot of things can go wrong and you're still going to make money. So uh, this, this weekly uh, covered call strategy has been profitable in uh, every type of market condition we've had over the last several years <clears throat> and <clears throat> it's less risk than <clears throat> owning stocks or ETFs because of the cash premium you receive every week in your account. So uh, weekly options uh, start trading on Thursday and then they expire the following Friday. So they have a, a life of six trading days. So they start trading on Thursday and then expire the following Friday. So uh, if you're doing these weekly covered calls, you can roll over the call either on Thursday or Friday. And uh, again, you have <clears throat> 52 opportunities each year to sell this option premium. And I've been doing it week in and week out here for a long time, and it's generated a tremendous amount of cash. <clears throat> so uh, when you roll over these uh, calls every week and collect the new cash premium, uh, it allows you to uh, compound your return very quickly. Uh, and just to go over some option basics, um, uh, options consist of time value and intrinsic value. And at the money uh, or out of the money calls consist of only time value. So I normally sell at the money calls, which are all time value. And at option expiration, options lose all their time value. So if you're short that option, the time value portion of that option becomes profit at option expiration, regardless of the price movement of the underlying stock. So I'm going to show you an example of one of the um, ETFs that I've been uh, selling option 
premium on for a long time. It's the um, TNA, which is a small cap leveraged ETF. And this, uh, uh, this ETF uh, has weekly options. So as soon as I found out that this ETF had weekly options and the premiums were pretty rich because it's a leveraged ETF, uh, I started trading the uh, weekly covered calls on. And what I like to do is keep, keep the TNA stock in my account and then each week just roll over the call option. That way I only have one, one transaction. Instead of buying the stock and then selling the call, I simply close out the call and then sell the new call. So this is an actual <clears throat> uh, option order I used last November. And at the time, I was um, closing out the November 23rd weekly option and selling the uh, November 30th weekly option. So this is uh, just an example of an actual um, spread trade that I that I used to roll over this weekly TNA option. And at the time, uh, TNA was trading at 54.27. Now it has since had a um, two for one stock split. So the price of the uh, TNA is back down or into the uh, 50. Fifty dollar range, but it's doubled in price because it had a uh, it had a two for one uh, stock split. So your your investment, if you wanted to, you know, trade this and you didn't own the stock, you, you know, you could buy a hundred shares for fifty fifty four hundred twenty seven dollars, uh, and that's what you would need to to do this uh, weekly covered call uh, program. <clears throat> so. Um, this is the, the actual order that I used, and this was my actual fill. And um, so I sold eight of the TNA November 30th weekly calls. This was the uh, 54 and a half strike at 142. So that resulted in $1,125 in cash being uh, credited to my uh, brokerage account. And <clears throat> at the time, uh, TNA was trading at 54.27. So if you sell the 54 and a half strike, that's greater than the stock price. So that was uh, an at the money, actually an out of the money call. And this was all time value. So um, that time value, this 142, $142, uh, the following week when it expired goes to zero. So that becomes profit in a week, no matter what happens to the uh, underlying stock. Um, so there's three things that can happen with these uh, cover, weekly covered calls. Um, and if TNA stock increases in price at option expiration, uh, I'm still gonna collect that $142 of time value if TNA stock remains flat, I collect $142 in time value. If TNA stock declines, I still collect $142 in time value, but that could be offset if the underlying stock declines more than 100 or more than 1.42 points. So uh, your downside is the uh, if the stock declines more than 1.42 points then you could have a loss for that week. But then again, you're, you're going to sell another premium. And, um, you know, even if the stock declines more than the premium you just sold, you're going to have another opportunity in a week to sell another premium and then the week after that. So if you keep doing that, even if the stock's declining, um, you're still, over the course of time, you're still going to be able to profit. <clears throat> So let's look uh, if, at the cost if you were going to initiate one of these weekly covered calls at that time. Uh, again, the stock was trading for 54.27 uh, minus the uh, 1.42 points of option premium you collect. So the net cost to do 100 shares of this trade if you were just starting out would be uh, $5,285. So that would be your investment. 
to start initiating these uh, weekly covered calls uh, with the uh, TNA ETF. So <clears throat> let's look at uh, how much cash we have we can collect uh, on this $5,285 investment. So let's assume that each week you're going to get a similar return and you're going to collect $142 in time value. Well, if you do that every week over 52 weeks, you're going to collect $7,384, and that would be a 139% uh, cash on cash return for your initial investment of 52.85. So you can see in this example, um, you're actually collecting more than 100% cash on cash return. And I've been doing these week week in and week out, and I have been collecting this much uh, premium. So uh, again, um, if you're collecting 139% cash on cash return, um, a lot can go wrong and I'm still gonna profit uh, on the trade. Uh, the underlying stock or ETF could, could decline substantially and, and you could still profit. And if you had bad timing on when you entered the trade, you could still profit. Um, there could be volatile price swings in the underlying ETF and you can still profit. So, and this also uh, allows you to avoid being stopped out of your position. When the markets were really volatile there for a while, uh, you could easily get stopped out of an option position or a stock position. But if you're doing these weekly uh, covered calls week in, week out, you don't have to worry about being stopped out if you're selling an option premium every week. So this gives the weekly covered call strategy a big advantage over directional trades um, where you just buy a stock or you buy uh, an option and you're hoping that the uh, the underlying stock moves in, in the, you know moves up in in order for that trade to be profitable. So uh, with this strategy, uh, you don't have to worry about timing. Uh, you don't have to worry about the direction of the ongoing stock because uh, you're collecting that premium every every week. And if you can get more than 100% cash on cash return, then a lot can go wrong and you're still, still going to profit. So um, uh, as I mentioned, I like to uh, roll over the uh, expiring options and then each week I collect more cash in my uh, account. And here's here's some more examples of uh, weekly option rollovers. This was uh, back in uh, February of last year. This was for Apple. I was trading uh, weekly covered calls. Now, uh, App Apple uh, was on a buy signal according to our prime trade select, but then uh, that reversed and it went into a sell signal, and at that point I sold my positions. But at the time it was on a buy signal, so I was doing these weekly covered calls. Uh, here's a, a rollover uh, example, and this was closing out the February 24th uh, weekly call and um, selling to open the March 2nd weekly call. So this is just an, another example of a rollover. Uh, this is for the uh, a rollover for the emerging markets index EEM. So uh, what I did is I looked through my brokerage account transaction reports uh, over the last ten months, and I have two re retirement accounts uh, where I trade these weekly options. And in uh, the larger uh, retirement account, I collected. $692,000 in premium, and in my smaller account, I collected $167,000 in premium. So all told, I, I collected uh, $860,000 in cash that went into these two retirement accounts. So I've been able to uh, compound my returns because I keep trading more and more of these uh, weekly covered calls as this cash comes into my account. Um, every week and I'm able to uh, increase the number of covered calls that I trade. 
So what I did is I um, took a snapshot uh, for this, uh, my first retirement account where I collected this $692,000 and I just listed the trades. You can see this was September 13th. So uh, this was last, uh, last Friday. Um, I sold uh, the FAS uh, 70 and a half strike call and I collected $3,992 in cash into my brokerage account. So what I did is I just listed all these weekly um, uh, covered call trades I did. And um, I'll just go through this quickly. So this right-hand column lists the cash that went into my account. And um, for this uh, first retirement account over the past 10 months, um, I collected uh, a total of $692,000 uh, in option premium. And then in my second account, I collected $167,000 in uh, option premium. So um, as I collect this option premium every week, I've been putting on more and more of these trades and that's enabled me to uh, compound my return. So this is another strategy we use to compound our returns. So um, again, if you wanna uh, get recent um, updates on the profitability of these various strategies, uh, just log on to weeklyoptionalert.com or you can call uh, Brad toll free at this number and uh, if you're, if you have any interest in the um, option advisory service. And if you log on to weeklyoptional.com and just click trade results, it'll give you the uh, current trade results for these various strategies. So uh, that concludes my presentation for today. And um, I'd be glad to take any uh, questions. Uh, Chuck, one question that keeps coming up is based on the size that you're trading, have you ever gotten exercised on a partial? And if you do, um, do you go out and repurchase those shares or do you start trading as a ratio spread at that point? Okay, yeah, that's a great question. Uh, what do you do if you get called? And um, Now, Tom, you're talking about the, the weekly – Covered calls, correct? Sure, that's correct. Yeah, so let's yeah, say that's... let's say you're 500 shares and you get exercised on 200 of it. Do you work a ratio spread, or do you go back out and buy another 200 shares and do buy rates again the following week? Yeah, you know um, that's only happened to me once or twice where my stock got called, um, and um, it doesn't happen very often. And w w I think it happens because the time value of the option. You know, if it's if it's deep in the money or in the money and the time value is near zero, that's the, the greatest risk of getting called. But if you get called, you just simply, uh, the, you know, the stock gets called out of your account. Let's say, uh, as a matter of fact, uh, the last time this happened, um, I had uh, 3,000 shares of uh, TNA and... Uh, I believe I got called on 800 of those 3,000 shares. So what I did is on Friday, I just bought 800 more shares. So that can happen once in a while. It doesn't happen very often, but if it happens, you just simply uh, buy uh, whatever number of shares got called. I just, I just buy a similar number of shares and then uh, sell an option premium. And then I maintain my, uh, my number of covered calls for that week. Another question, Chuck, uh, we have from a client is regarding your covered call portfolio, whether it's a yearly or monthly covered calls or weeklies, do you keep those specifically in your IRAs or do you trade them in other accounts as well? Uh, yeah, that's a good question. Um, if you can, it's, it's, it's better to trade these in your retirement accounts because there's less accounting you know if you trade it in a regular brokerage account you have to account for these trades every week with the irs but i trade these in my retirement account that way there's no reporting to the irs and uh that saves me a lot of time at tax time you know with the return so if you can i recommend 
you know, trading these in an IRA account and uh, not having to do any of that reporting. And uh, also, of course, the uh, profits uh, are not taxable. So it's, it's better if you can do these in uh, retirement accounts like I do. Now, this is, this is the, the, the grand question that I've gotten about a dozen times, Chuck, uh, through the chat area. What is your sentiment after hearing Bernanke today in the markets? Are you bullish, bearish, or do you feel neutral moving forward? Or does it not uh, matter? Uh, I, don't, I, don't think it, I don't think it matters. Um, I think that um, you know, the interest rates really spiked up uh, in the last six months or so. Uh, so my, my guess is the, the interest rates are just going to stay about where they are for the next couple of years. And, uh, you know, I don't, I don't expect the 10 year to get above uh, 3% over the next couple of years. And if that's the case, it's going to be a great environment for uh, stocks because, you know, the stock yields, especially dividend paying stocks are always competing against that 10 year and, you know, if the 10 years at 2.75 over the next several years, um, I think that that's a good environment for further uh, stock gains. Last question from uh, some of your clients as well as mine, Chuck, is a lot of people are talking about these mini options. And some people are asking, have you started doing some back testing or forward testing on mini options at all? Well, uh, with, the, with the mini options, of course, um, they're one tenth of the value of uh, a regular option. So, any any back testing you do with that, um, you know, you would just simply change your multiplier and you'd get the same results. You know, so in other words, if if you were to buy an Apple option, let's say it costs ten points, um, you know, normally if you just buy the regular option that covers a hundred shares, that's going to cost you a thousand dollars but if you trade the mini option and it costs 10 points then it's going to cost you a hundred dollars so it's it's simply uh one tenth of um the um value of a regular option and um oh i just wanted to add to that the previous question uh about where i think the markets are going <laughs> uh, i forgot to preface that by saying my general philosophy is um I never try to predict where markets are going because nobody really knows. Um, I was listening to the uh, commentators on CNBC today before before the Fed announcement, and every one of those commentators got it wrong about what was going to happen with the Fed. I mean, how can you predict that? So that just uh, underscores my point where there's no point in trying to predict where any market's going to go because nobody really knows. So. If you're doing these weekly covered calls and you're doing these market neutral spreads, you don't really care where the markets are going because uh, you're going to make money even if the markets go down. And um, so I, I'm completely neutral on uh, the future price direction of the market. It doesn't affect me in any way when I'm doing this, this trading day in and day out. So I strictly rely on these strategies that, to make money no matter what. Chuck, I, I, you covered a lot as usual, and I have about another thousand questions I can ask you, but due to the time slot that we have, we're not going to be able to get to those. Um, for those of you that do have questions, by all means, feel free to log on to www.weeklyoptionalert.com. Uh, Chuck has a lot of information regarding positions and, and the portfolios in there, and feel free to contact Brad. Um, Brad will go through uh, the strategies as well as performance and things that have nature with a fine tooth comb. Chuck, I'm going to go ahead and take the reins back from you just so you know. Okay, um, great. For, for those of you that haven't been here before, um, Chuck is gracious enough to allow us to archive these webinars. And many of the questions that you had out there today were asking me, well, how does Chuck come up with this stock? And why this particular position? And, and where does he go to get his calculations? What I have on the screen right now is MyTradeMonster.com. This is where we archive Chuck's webinars as well as some of our other authors. If you click on free education, what it'll do will bring you up to this page. Today, you can see Chuck's webinar here today, Register Fee. What I'm doing right now is I'm circling September, or yeah, September right here, 2011. 
Chuck did a two-part presentation here under September where he gives you the stock selection process. This is, Chuck, if I'm correct, this is the foundation for your cover calls. This is how you get to that point. Yes, yes. Uh, I use the uh, three-step prime trade select process. Right. So everyone heard him mention that, the prime select process. So to get to what Chuck covered today, we implore you to go back to September 2011, see the foundation increments of how he goes in and actually purchases that stock and what he looks for and the lists he looks at before implementing any of these strategies. Again, contact Brad, contact Chuck's support system. He can help you with that. Uh, otherwise, tomorrow, for those of you that want to listen to the archive here or download it, nonetheless, go to www.mytrademonster.com. Right up here under the month of September, I'm going to have Chuck's webinar archive. And by all means, feel free to reach out to Chuck's support staff. They're great. Um, they can help you in some directions that I can't being a broker. Otherwise, Chuck, thanks again, buddy. It was a great okay. webinar. A lot of questions, and I'm sure you're going to get a lot of, a lot of questions directly your way via emails this time. Okay, great. And thank you, Tom, for taking the time to uh, set this all up. And I uh, hope everybody has a great evening. Yeah, thanks, Chuck, as well. And thanks for coming out and taking the time. If any of you have any questions regarding brokerage, feel free to go to MyTradeMonster.com. We do auto trade Chuck services, and we can help you out from A to Z regarding IRAs, corporate accounts, whatever the case may be. Feel free to contact us. Um, otherwise, John Buxton, thanks for thanking us. And for the rest of you that thank us, Chuck, a lot of thanks and a lot of gratitude out there towards you. So just extending that to you as well. Uh, okay, otherwise, great. everyone have a wonderful evening. I hope you enjoyed it. We'll have the archive up tomorrow. Uh, trade, trade hard, trade like a monster, and everyone have a nice weekend. Okay, thanks, good night. Sean. All right, thank good you. Night. All right, bye-bye.